And we've just had the meeting then of the Friends of Syria meeting in London, that is to say on uh, Thursday. And what you notice is that Syria seems to have fewer and fewer friends as the uh, terrorist rebels are driven out of cities. This past week we have the definitive end of the fighting around the city of Homs, and I uh, congratulate Homs on having held out in the cause of civilization and having asserted civilization over barbarism by driving out the terrorist rebels. Unfortunately, the fact that those rebels were able to transfer themselves out has led to some momentary deterioration uh, in the uh, Aleppo area because they had to go somewhere, and I guess they decided to go back to the battlefront. But uh, that will not, I trust, uh, last uh, too long, especially with Bandar transferring his fighters into Ukraine, as we know. So um, it's it's there's no uh, formal statement in the U.S. press that the U.S. has decided to send in these um, uh, sophisticated uh, weapons that the that the rebels have been uh, demanding the entire time. And remember. The slaughter plan, Anne-Marie Slaughter, nomen est omen, has been demanded behind the scenes. You want to strike Putin, you've got to do it through Syria. It's too dangerous to do it in Ukraine, okay? I know you're reluctant, says Anne-Marie Slaughter. So therefore, we're going to counterattack Putin in Syria by depriving him of his ally there. This is all absolute uh, insanity, and of course, uh, it simply stokes the fires of terrorism, which the U.S. is supposed to uh, oppose. And the, the fear uh, in some of the coverage of this Syria week here, the fear, of course, that lots and lots of terrorist crazies are going to be coming back uh, to the U.S. is, is everywhere. Now, concerning um, Ukraine, <laughs> London Economist editorial here last week, what would America fight for with a nice eagle on the cover of the May 3rd to May 9th, London Economist. Well, uh, what would the U.S. fight for? I tell you, national defense. Uh, defense against foreign attack, I guess. But not for the kinds of geopolitical manipulations that the city of London has been inflicting on the world for about 400 years. So the meddlers of London, uh, just like the meddlers of Paris with Fabius, are invited to shut up or put up or shut up. A very unlikely that any of these uh, Weltmacht Ruinen, these ruins of ex-world powers, are likely to do anything uh, alone or even the two of them uh, together. The U.S. line is now that Moscow is somehow responsible for the success of the Ukrainian elections in two weeks, uh, the Ukrainian fascist creek. And we know now that uh, the uh, son of Biden... Uh, not uh, Bo Biden, but the younger son of Vice President Biden is on the board of a Ukrainian gas company. You can get the details on this off my uh, Twitter page. Uh, and so we've got absolute rampant nepotism, conflict of interest, corruption. A friend of the Kerry Heinz family is also on the board, and uh, the the son of Joe Biden. So these people are cashing in. And, of course, the demand for sanctions (laughs) will raise the price of gas in Ukraine so that these characters can carry out primitive accumulation against the Ukrainian uh, population. Uh, There is a report from the United Nations on Ukraine, which uh, obviously whitewashes that massacre in Odessa two weeks ago. Uh, We're getting all sorts of reports. One interesting report is this telephone conversation where we learn from two friends of Kolomoisky that the oligarch Kolomoisky is uh, the one who sent in some of the teams that eventually did much of the killing. Uh, the claim is that Kolomoisky didn't really want them to kill quite so many people, but uh, that's anybody's guess. There's also an account of what happened from the uh, Russian journal Antifascist. So you want to take a look at Antifascist online, right? Use your Google translator. And remember, uh, the, the land of the oligarchs is now Ukraine. Poroshenko, the chocolate king uh, of the British Cadbury 
uh, and uh, World Cocoa Cartel, centered in London. This Poroshenko is now uh, the expected candidate to win the election. And we've seen the wonderful democracy in Ukraine, Turchin off the president, cutting off the head of the Communist Party and saying he wants to ban the Communist Party opposition. Great, great way to run a presidential campaign. Back in a minute.